last video, I showed you how to find a fully funded PhD project from findaphd.com or university websites. Today, we're going to carry on from that video and I'm going to walk you through the next steps on how to apply for a PhD. I'll show you the documents you need to prepare, how to stand out from other applicants and everything you need to do before you apply so that you get the highest chance of being invited for an interview. So step one, find more information about the project. So the first thing you need to do, which a lot of students miss, and it exponentially increases your chance to be invited, is to show understanding of the project. Usually advertised projects don't give you all the information about the project because professors want to protect their ideas. So what you want to do is look at the professor's profile page on the university website and see what they've been working on. You also want to look at the lab group page and go through recent publications that are relevant to the project. You also want to Google the research area in general so you understand the terminology, what the main ideas are, and the research background. This will help you understand the project better. At this point, you also want to evaluate if you're honestly interested in this project. If you're not, I would recommend quitting at this point and finding another project that you're actually interested in. It doesn't matter if this is your dream university, the funding is great, if you're not interested, please do not progress past this point. And trust me, this will show throughout your application and your interview, and there's a 95% chance you're not gonna get accepted if you're not actually interested in the project. In the 5% off chance that you are accepted, you'll end up spending three to four years working on something that you're not interested in, and that's gonna make for a very miserable PhD. Step two, emailing the professor. This is absolutely crucial, and this is what most students miss. Don't just simply apply using the portal once you've found a project, absolutely not. Email the professor, invite them to schedule a meeting with you to understand more about the project and the work that they're doing. This will help you build a rapport so the professor isn't receiving a random application from a total stranger, but it will also give you the chance to discuss the project and get extra information that you can put in your cover letter and your application to make it stand out to the selection committee. Think of this as a mini interview. It's going to be a very important meeting. Make sure you come absolutely prepared because this is the first impression the professor will have of you. Make sure by this point you've read around the field, you understand in general what the area is about and then when you go in the meeting ask lots of questions about the project about the research area the research gaps the techniques you'll be using the experiments they've already done the results that they found what didn't make sense what they want to know more of this and that if you want to take it a step further talk to them about your own ideas have you tried this have you tried that did this work? Why not? What next? Blah, blah, blah. This will be really impressive because it will show them that you can think like a scientist, you can discuss research, and you have your own ideas. And if you don't understand something, you can ask the right questions to help you understand what you need to understand. Basically, you're ready to be a PhD student. Step 2.5. If the professor says, they can't meet you, just apply, they will look at all the applications first and then meet people later. Don't worry, thank them for their response and ask them if there are any publications of theirs that are very relevant to this project that will help you understand the project better. You want to do a little bit extra. You want to do more than what everyone else will do, which is just apply with a generic application using the portal, not understanding the project, not tailoring their cover letter to this particular project, not including specific things that they are interested in doing, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to be that student. You want to be different. Step three, collecting your documents. The three most important things you will need for a PhD application are a cover letter or personal statement, your academic CV, and reference letters. I've made a whole video series on what goes in a PhD personal statement or cover letter, so you can watch that series on my channel. I've also made lots of videos where I edit personal statements so you can see real personal statements and what the most common mistakes are and how to really improve and perfect that personal statement. Here's a top tip. Do not use ChatGPT to write your personal statement. It's gonna end up being incredibly boring and because ChatGPT uses lots of data to generate its responses, your personal statement's gonna end up looking like every other personal statement. Plus the language and structure of ChatGPT responses are very obvious and very off-putting. So if you use ChatGPT, you're gonna ensure that you don't get invited. 
The second thing you need is a CV. This is the CV I apply to for my PhD program. The key things in a CV are to start off with a header, just three statements max on who you are and what your research interests are. Then you want to put your educational experience and your research experience in the first page. I usually like to group my research experience by different projects, and then I will add more detail as bullet points, maybe the skills or techniques that you learned in that project. You can also have a separate research skills and experimental techniques section over here. I did this in a previous uh, CV. Then you want to put any publications, conference talks or posters that you've done and put that in a separate section. But don't worry, you don't need a publication to apply for a PhD. I didn't have one and I got accepted. If you've got lots of time on your hands, you can make it look pretty. I used a free Canva template for this, but for my PhD, I just applied using that Word doc CV and it worked. The last thing you need are references. This needs to be someone who knows you in an academic setting. So like a professor at your university, a lecturer, a supervisor that you've done research with, ideally a lab head, but it can also be a postdoctoral researcher. I don't recommend it being a boss for your side job unless it was a research position. That could be an extra third reference letter for your professional skills or soft skills, but you need to have at least two reference letters that are from academic. Last step is to really read through the application requirements. Make sure you've got all the documents ready. If they need transcripts, you give them transcripts. Read, reread, edit, and perfect. And then you can send it off and sit back and relax. Until you get invited for an interview, in which case you can panic, or you can watch my video series on PhD interviews. Take care, subscribe for more.